I dated a man for a couple months this fall. We never were anything exclusive, but he taught me a lot and I wanted to share one of the lessons I learned from him. I'll never forget on, I think it was like our first or second date, I had asked him when his last relationship had ended and why. And he had proceeded to tell me that it was two years ago and it had ended because he had some um, anxious attachment issues that he hadn't worked through yet. Fellas, I'm gonna give you a big tip. When a woman asks you how long it's been since, since you've been in a relationship, don't say two years. Because when women ask questions, they're looking to disqualify you. They're looking to see just how weak you are. If you tell her two years, she's looking at you with, like, what's wrong with you? Two years ago? So, yeah, I mean, it, it sucks that you have to not tell the truth. But, you know, I mean, obviously you can do whatever it is you want to do. You can try to be as honest as you want to be. But I'm just telling you, when you tell women these things, they can use them against you. And a woman is not asking you a question just to ask you a question. It's always for a reason. And it's usually always a test. So be careful. Because odds are, if you ask her something, she's not going to tell you the full truth. But men live under this stupid idea that if I'm just so honest and I just, I'm honest and I tell her the truth, she's going to respect me and she's going to like me. But you have to understand that odds are she's not telling you the whole truth. Now, being somebody that's been doing the work for years, I've been single for almost two years, to hear a man talk about his attachment wounds, I was like, oh, what? Sign me up. So he had explained that he had, you know, really bad anxious attachment and it caused, you know, problems in their last relationship and he was working through those. And I didn't ask any more clarifying questions in that moment. I didn't ask like, you know, how have you worked through those? That was my own naivety, I guess. And um, anyway, so fast forward. Hold up, guys. You know, I just noticed that she's actually laying on a dog. <laughs> you know, I love animals and I love dogs, but that's a red flag. I'm sorry. Dog is in the bed. All of that laying on a dog like that's her boyfriend and all of that. That dog is going to come before any man. So I just wanted to point that out because I know a lot of women, you know, they want to show off their dogs like their children. They got them all in their dating app pictures. And, you know, it's always about the dogs, this and that. A lot of men see that some of them understand what it means, but I don't think a lot of men do. There's a reason why a lot of these women have dogs. But as far as these uh, attachments and all of that type of thing, um, yeah, there's some validity to that right your your past definitely influences your future but a lot of times what a lot of people do especially women is they use those things to validate the behavior that they have now okay they can say well i act this way because i have this type of attachment or because this happened to me yes things happen to a lot of people everybody's life you know you don't grow up squeaky clean with no drama everybody has issues you know my father was an alcoholic i knew where my father was but he was never around but do i then later in life say you know what i've made all these mistakes in my life and i became an alcoholic myself which i didn't but i became an alcoholic myself because my father did it or i did this because i didn't get that or my mom did this to me at some point you have to take responsibility for yourself and what it sounds like is this guy said to himself, you know what, I'm going to mention all these things and I'm going to say these things because maybe that'll make me appear more worthy because I'm sharing and I'm being so open and honest. But fellas, you have to understand, it's a complete different story from a woman saying these things versus you saying these things, okay? And like I said before, when you keep telling women all these things, you have to understand a lot of times these women will take these things, store them away, and use them against you later. It's not a man's job to sit there and be talking about attachments and all this emotional stuff. That's what women do. So when you start doing that as a man, a woman sees that as weakness. Now, I know there's going to be women in the comments saying, that's not true, and this and that. It is true. And any man that has lived long enough and have had an, uh, enough experience in his experiences in his life will understand. But you young guys out there, you don't have to listen to me. 
do whatever it is you want to do. But you will learn. And a lot of times you're going to learn the hard way. Into the relationship just a few months in. Wait, let me backtrack. I did ask him if he had read the book attached and he hadn't. And I had had a copy. So we had exchanged books at the beginning of our relationship. So I gave him a book uh, or a copy of the book attached. And I don't know for me, like it's not a red flag if somebody hasn't read the book attached. But if you are curious about attachment wounds and attachment work, I feel like a lot of people start there. So we are seeing each other for like, I don't know, two or three months. And I start to realize that this man doesn't have anxious attachment. He's actually pretty avoidant and his avoidant. Yeah, so she's she's become a, a psychotherapist now. She, she knows. <laughs> Tendencies were kind of activating my own um, attachment wounds. And I'm very aware of my attachment wounds and I, I recognize it's my responsibility to work through those and find safety in my own body. But being in a partnership, I I wanna be in a partnership where if those wounds are activated, I can have a conversation so we can find a way to meet each other's needs and care for each other in, in a way that like feels best for both of us. And when I would attempt to have those conversations with him, it was like, he, what, he did not even understand what I was saying. Like he couldn't meet me in those conversations. He just couldn't grasp what I was talking about. And I. You know, do you ever notice that people that talk about these attachment issues and stuff like that, you notice how they never get over them? You notice how they're always prevalent in their lives because they don't want to get rid of them because those are the things that they can use to make excuses for the way that they act. I realized he had no understanding of his own attachment wound, of attachment wounds in general. Um, and I look back now on like that first date or so and I was like, oh, that was like, like, you know, like I think he understood that there's attachment lingo and he used that. And so I felt like, whoa, this man is very self-aware and obviously at certain depths in his own like healing journey to be able to like have that awareness. But I realized he never had that at all. Like his depth when it came to attachment wounds was literally this deep. And so the valuable lesson that he taught me was to ask more clarifying questions. And sometimes people know the lingo. Sometimes people know like how to say the right things or say like, the phrase words or the key words that I think some of us are looking for, therapy, attachment wounds, blah, blah, blah. So ask more clarifying questions, okay? Ask up front. Guys, if you run into a woman like this, you probably should just run because she's always gonna have issues. She's always gonna have these attachment issues. She's always gonna be in therapy. And I don't know if you noticed when the scene changed, I noticed that she had tattoos on her arm. That's another red flag. I'm sorry. For women to have tattoos, it has some type of significance to it. Usually women get tattoos because they're trying to get over something traumatic. Like they have definite meaning to them. Like I was dating this girl one time and she had all these um, dream catcher tattoos, you know, like the, it's like a dream catcher. It's got the net and it's got like the feathers around it, the circle or kind of whatever shape it is i'm sure you've guys seen that some people have them um in their cars some might have them hanging up in their houses and i asked her i was like why do you have so many tattoos of dream catchers because she had like five of them and she told me she was like the reason why i have dream catchers is because i have nightmares about relationships and other things when i sleep so i figured if i put these tattoos on me that they would help me get past these issues fellas like i said tattoos have a lot of different meanings behind them and when you see women with a whole bunch of tattoos it's not that she just liked the tattoo and she went and got it tatted on her now that's not to say that men don't get tattoos that have meaning of course we do but it's not the same thing usually when women have tattoos it's to um document and to try to get over some type of trauma i know women that have had tattoos because of the first time that they had a sexual encounter, they're gonna get a tattoo. A lot of them like to get those kind of tattoos behind their ear, on the wrist, maybe their um, ankle, little small tattoos that represents those, uh, that represents those times in their lives. So when you see a woman with a lot of tattoos, you see a woman talking about trauma and attachments. Um, you see women that um, treat 
animals like children, those are all red flags. And another big one is women that just want to talk about this type of stuff all the time. Because see, like I said before, a lot of women ask you questions and talk about things because it's always a test. Women say things and ask you things to see just how you're going to react. And if you're not a strong man in your strong masculine uh, frame, and you sit there and you start crying and you start talking about attachments and my daddy did this, all these type of things. Women see that as weakness. You cannot believe them when they say, just be open and just be honest about your feelings because they're, they're looking for some reason to put you in a category. Either you're gonna be in the masculine category or you're gonna be in the more feminine category. And unfortunately, the feminine category is what a lot of these women want men to be in because if they can get men to be in that zone, then that means that they become the man of the relationship. That mean that they means that they can dictate the relationship and they can make the relationship go any kind of way they want. And if you ever act out, if she ever has a problem with you, what's the first thing she's going to say? Well, you're acting like that because your dad did this or because your mom did that or because this woman did this to you or because of that time you told me in the fifth grade where they stole your lunch. So be careful. You cannot be opening up yourself and talking about all these things. Now, what this guy probably did was he figured, you know, I'm going to talk about something that I know these women like to talk about all the time, and maybe that'll help me get closer to her. Let me talk about these attachment styles. Let me talk about therapy and all of that. And maybe that'll help me get closer to her. And maybe it'll help me get to the end result that I'm trying to get to. But it's just not worth it. If you got to go through all that and you got to jump through all them hoops and you got to um, get out of your male frame to get close to a woman, to get her to really like you, that's a problem. You should always be able to stay in your masculine frame and attract women that way. Okay? Don't be like women and switch up. I want to be a man today. I want to be a, a woman tomorrow. Be a man at all times. Stick to your guns at all times. And don't lie. You don't have to lie. Just say you're not interested. Just say, you know what? You're a nice person, but this is not going to work for me. And just move on. Because even if you get to a point where you can get to that end that last base you're trying to get to you're going to have a lot of drama bro a lot of drama and as soon as you do that act with her she's going to think that she can just do even more it's going to get worse it's not going to get better because now you've opened up the door for that so be smart pick wisely don't choose damaged women because there's a lot of them out there and i I mean, there's so many women that are on this prescription drug stuff for depression and bipolar and stuff and all that. I would not be surprised that she's another one. You have the power to achieve anything you want. Don't let anything or anyone distract you from your goals. And remember, stay focused, stay strong, and stay positive. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with those in need.